Hi everybody and welcome to another Universe Sandbox video and sit back because today we are going to take a look at Comet Atlas, a comet I showed you also in my previous coding sessions if you follow this kind of playlist as well, where we took the orbital elements of the comet to see how it behaves. But today we have a small update from the Universe Sandbox people and I would like to show you what this update is all about. And just a small spoiler, as the name indicates and as I already mentioned slightly, it is about the three interstellar comets we already observed in the last couple of years. So without further ado, I would say let's go to Universe Sandbox and take a look how we can display the three different comets. So let's go. Now this is the starting screen of Universe Sandbox. And as you see, we have a top view of our, of our solar system with the eight planets and all planets are revolving in a closed orbit around the sun. Now the eccentricity is a value that gives you the... Um, provides you the shape information of the planets. Like for example, if it's perfectly zero, it's a circle. And if it's between zero and one, one not included, it's a closed orbit, but on an elliptical orbit. And all our objects are on elliptical orbits in the solar system. So this almost looks a little bit very circular, let's say, but especially the asteroids and comets, they have very, some have very eccentric orbits. If we zoom out a little bit, we see some candidates that have very weirdly shaped orbits. It's a little bit messy here in the starting screen, but leave it, let's keep it that way. Also, another observation is that if we take a edge on view, we see that almost all objects are in the so-called ecliptic plane. So the ecliptic plane is like the, you can imagine like the table where everything is revolving around. And this table is a reference plane and our home planet is this reference plane. Now, there are objects like comets that have an eccentricity larger than one or yeah, one or larger than one means it's an open orbit. It's not a closed one. And we already had previously some comets with these kind of or eccentricities, but due to measurement errors and you have to provide the errors and also gravitational perturbation, it doesn't mean that they are flying away and never coming back because you can then compute that after some gravitational perturbations, after some years, they have a closed orbit again and then they come back after a few thousands of years. Anyway, we are talking today about the interstellar comets and we go here to the menu bar and then open the simulation. We have tons of different simulations. Some are, um, some are pretty nice and decent um, to get you a better insight of how astrodynamics work, also collisions. Some are a little bit random like this one here. But anyway, uh, let's go here to the interstellar comet 3, uh, 3i Atlas. And we open it and we also get some information, but let's close it for now. And here is our uh, Atlas comet. We can just make a short, yeah, just pause it shortly. And there we see this comet, how it is entering our solar system. So you see it's coming from, a, um, from above the ecliptic plane somewhere. And it's almost like on a straight line. So as you may have already heard that the... Um, the, the, the different probes on Mars, they are observing Atlas. Now we have here August, let's go a little bit further. And then you see that Mars and Atlas are coming quite close together. So we can also yeah, increase it a little bit more. And then we see the close approach was already a few weeks ago. Now there we see it, if we can, we can go to Mars a little bit and zoom there, there we see that the comet is passing by yeah, in the northern part of the ecliptic plane. So, yeah, pretty fast moving away. You can center again to the sun, zoom out a little bit, and then take a look here at the time and also the speed of the comet. You see the straight line is only a little bit bent to another, slightly bent by just a few degrees, and then the comet is already leaving the solar system, flying into another direction. Now, this is something maybe for a coding video to see in which direction it came from and in which direction it will head to. Theoretically, you could then compute um, to which next star system it will fly. However, then you have to already, already also consider the um, relative movements of the stars with respect to the sun. So it's a little bit more difficult than just computing some, some values. And then we see that next year already in May, we have the comet is already between Jupiter and Saturn. The activity will yeah, all most likely already decline, and then it will cross the Saturn at around July next 
next year. So this would be, if we would have a space probe and with that pace, that would be amazing because then you could go into interstellar space quite quickly. So next year, this time, wait, it's October now. We have just wait for a few seconds. It will be then already halfway to the orbit of Uranus and then afterwards Neptune and so on. So pretty interesting and pretty uh, fast comet that is then flying, I think, to the south of the ecliptic plane. If you just take a edge on view, yeah, just a few degrees south. Pretty cool. There are also the other comets in um, in universe sandbooks you can take a look at, but I think Atlas is currently the one where most people are talking about it. So I hope you enjoyed this short introduction of Combat Atlas using Universe Sandbox, and until next time.